uh, this is what we call sit down comedy. So I am honored and happy to be here. Uh, love kids, love to have all of you guys here. And uh, let me tell you what I do as I travel around America. I filmed 11 PBS series. You guys might like the new movie I did called with Tom Shadiak. And Tom Shadiak did the movie Bruce Almighty, Evan Almighty, Ace Ventura, one and two, Patch Adams, Liar Liar, Nutty Professor. And it was awesome because he's such a great heartfelt guy that he gave money to young performers to go out and uh, capture the world and find out what makes people happy. And what we found out was that one word makes people happy and the word is compassion loving and caring about others. And uh, I did a part in there where I was talking to kids about bullying. And it's very powerful. You can watch it. It'll bring tears to your eyes. It's called uh, Bully Speech Happy Movie. And uh, it is, it's a powerful film. But the reason I wanted to prep that was because when you see what uh, that is about and Lessons from the Heart by George Lucas... Uh, it's another thing that George and I are friends and I work for Edutopia and uh, I did work for Edutopia on social emotional learning. So that's what I do. I, I keep uh, traveling around America, keep an active schedule, talking to kids. Yesterday I was at Goodwill Industries of the Silicon Valley talking to folks about uh, encouraging all the folks that are at risk in our culture and in our society. And so that we don't look the other way and we hold compassion, uh, truth, and, and, and the quality of uh, helping others and reaching out to them. So um, let me tell you a little about my work with kids and how fun kids are. I mean, kids are awesome. When I'm with kindergartners, and they're the most amazing, I have to tell you that if you wanna understand how brilliant kids are, Listen to kindergartners. I was talking to kindergartners, and I teach them. I go, boys and girls, don't overstand people. Understand people. And a kid raises his hand. He goes, yeah, but Mr. Pritchard, don't you think we need understanding as well? And I went, wow. Wow. Right? I had another little girl when I was talking. I said, you know, you don't have to blow someone else's candle out to make sure yours shines brighter. And a second grader looks at me and goes, Mr. Mike, if you do go around blowing out other people's candles and bullying them, eventually you will be the one in the darkness. It is not only deep, it is so apropos. Now, when you're talking to 10 year olds, and if you want to know why to hold hope in the world, it's the kids. They're emotionally more brilliant than any other generation that's ever come our way. And why? Not just because they have a library in the palm of their hand, but there are many of us out there teaching love to them more than you'd think. So here I am sitting with a, a second, third grade girl. No, she was 10, so fourth. And I'm talking to her and I go, what's all this anger going on out there? Because when I'm talking to kids, they're so smart. She goes, People are stacking up their resentments, stacking up their resentments, stacking up their resentments, and then they go volcanic. I go, wow, what makes you so old, so wise? And she goes, I don't know, maybe God recycles us. Now, I don't care who you are, you couldn't write that. You couldn't think that. You couldn't come up with that as a writer. So kids, now when I'm with kids who are dyslexic, when I teach why, Everybody's running around talking about just race and all the things that are going on and stuff. But it's even as simple as learning differences. So I get a kid. He's dyslexic and he's so smart. He's so smart. He looks at me and goes, hey, man, Mr. Mike, did you know that the words silent and listen have the same letters? Wow. L-I-S-T-E-N, S-I-L-E-N-T. How'd you know that? Oh man, everybody teases me. They call me stupid, but I'm smart in another way. They tease me because I'm lydesic. I go, wow. He goes, did you know secure and rescue have the same letters? Did you know that the word heart and earth have the same letters? And did you know that earth without art is just eh? And did you know that blame, the word blame is just me at the end with blah, blah, blah in front? 
and shame is just me at the end with shh, shh, shh. That's how bullies work. They shame you into silence. I don't want to live there. He's 10, right? Come on. When you're thinking about children and how smart they can be, I look at him and as I'm leaving, he goes, don't forget, reactive and creative, same letters. Hello, world. No, I know. And the thing is, is that you spend a little time with children, you start to realize, now I was a learning different kid. I know that's hard for you to believe. Uh, I had attention deficit disorder hyperactivity. Can you imagine a comedian with that? Jim Carrey, Robin Williams, Jack Black, Eddie Murphy. But I can sit at Skywalker Ranch and do this. Fear is the path to the dark side. And then, of course, my all-time favorite for many of you of the 60s, Richard Nixon. I introduced Joan Baez at the Greek theater with that silly imitation once. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the Greek theater's full. It's the 70s. Joan Baez and Richard Nixon introduces her. And I had black hair. I don't look cool. Just kidding. But anyway, what I'm saying is silly is fun. I, I think teaching kids that creativity, laughter, joy, because folks, you don't stop laughing because you grow old. You grow old because you stop laughing. And you don't stop playing because you grow old. You grow old because you stop playing. And most important, more important than anything else, picture this, is kids are smart about this stuff. I was talking to kindergartners. They're hilarious. I, I go... Hey, boys and girls, who takes care of the plants and flowers because they need fresh air, sunshine, and love? And this five-year-old goes, no. I said, who said no? I did because my dad grows trees in his closet. <laughs> Hilarious, fun, joyful, playful, silly. If you tried to write what children teach, but then they can be serious. Serious. I go, what'd you learn today by what I said? Don't let their bad day be your bad day or your bad day be their bad day. Don't play angry tag with people. I go, wow, well, can you come to Washington, D.C. with me? I'm going to talk to a few people there. Anyway, then five-year-olds, what do they teach you? If they're emotionally wise, I tell them that Helen Keller was asked, oh, Miss Keller, it must be hard for you to be blind. And she said, well, it would be if I had no vision. We see with our hearts. This is what today is about. See with your heart. You know, meditate, don't medicate. Less big pharma and more big dharma. That'll hit you later. You know, what do five-year-olds teach us? I go, why I said I want a five-year-old? I go, what do you think, man? He goes, don't let your sad turn to mad, because then it all gets bad. He's five, but he gets it. And what do we know from that? I think the most powerful gift you get is when you actually listen to children, they teach us more about love. Special needs kids I love, I think special needs kids, I think they're living thermometers of love. And they teach love completely. And they teach us how to be less judgmental. Because if you judge people, you'll never have time to learn to love them. So, again, don't overstand, understand. Watch your tempers out there with the kids. Anger past 30 seconds is ego. And the ego is not your amigo. That'll hit you later. Well... But it's true, you know, I mean, all this irrational anger in our culture, and it's pretty unconscious. And why? It's ego. I want what I want for me. And it's selfish. So 
teaching kids to share, to love, to be compassionate, to be caring, to be responsive to each other. When we were down in Pismo Beach, one of the kids who's autistic gets up and I ask kids, if you see the Happy Movie or George Lucas's movie, Lessons from the Heart, you'll always see me asking kids, please come up and share what it feels like to be picked on, teased, isolated, marginalized, bullied. And people don't think the kids will come up in front of their peers and they come in droves. And when they come in droves, they teach better than we could ever learn from a professor anywhere. So the kid in Pismo, he looks at me, I love you. So amazing, this kid gets up in front of the whole school. And he goes, you know what? A lot of you call me the school loser, the school shooter, the school owner, but you don't know me. I have Asperger high functioning autism and it's like really hard for me to make friends. And so I do kind of isolate in the library and isolate in the cafeteria because I can't stand loud noises. And a lot of kids in these years are, are loud. And so I do need for you to understand, you should try to become a friend to me. You should get to understand me. And you know what? You should get to make a friend out of me because chances are increasing you might have a kid like me one day. I teach nothing but what I learn daily from children. I have nothing. I'm broke as the Ten Commandments and happy as hell. I have a son who's a doctor. I have a son who's a sitcom writer and creator up in Nova Scotia right now doing a whole, mo a whole sitcom about uh, women in the 80s doing aerobics. It's hilarious. But I have a, a daughter who's close to my heart. She's a therapist. She styles women's hair and listens to their life situations. Smartest one of the group. A chef, a masseuse, a therapist, a loving healer. If we are wise, we imbue our kids with that great line. Your children are not your children, but the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. And although they come through you, they are not from you. Although they live with you, they belong not to you. You can give them your love, but not your thoughts, for they have thoughts of their own. You can house their bodies, but not their souls, for they live in the house of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. You can strive to be like them, but seek not to be them be like you, because life goes not backward, nor tarries with yesterday. You are the bow from which your children as living arrows are sent forth. And the archer sets his mark on the path of the infinite, and bends his bow with all of his might, that his arrows might go swift and far. Let your bending in the archer's hand be for gladness, for as he loves the arrow that flies forward to the future, so also does he love the bow that is stable. Be part of that stable bow, folks. The will of God will never take you to where the grace of God cannot uplift and heal you. And there is wisdom. And whether you believe in God, who cares, you know? Do what Barack Obama just said in the face of all this crazy in the world. Be a relentless optimist. Thank you.